Good morning and welcome to worship. Today we are celebrating the final Sunday of our church year with Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. As a reminder, we will be celebrating Holy Communion this morning. If you are here in person, you should have received your elements at the back of the sanctuary. If you forgot to pick them up, please feel free to run back and grab them. You're joining us at home. All are welcome at God's table, and so feel free to join us. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth now divided by the power of sin may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Daniel, the seventh chapter. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from the presence. A thousand thousand serve him, served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the cloud of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, and all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Psalm 93 shall be read responsibly. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the word assured, so sure that it cannot be moved. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness benefits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. The second reading is from the first chapter of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, through serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, to every eye will see him, even those who pierce him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. According to John, the 18th chapter. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? 
Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, it doesn't make noise. Happy New Year! No, this side didn't like it. I don't know if this is going to work again. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Happy New Year! No? No? Anyone? Anyone know? So, today is New Year's Eve in the church world. Is it New Year's Eve in normal time? No? Do we know what day it is? A little early, right? It's still November. We haven't had Thanksgiving or Christmas, right? Those come first. But see, the church, we have a different calendar. We have a different timeline. And today is the last Sunday of our church year. So that makes it New Year's Eve. Yeah? No, we're not buying it? Pastor, you just wanted to wear a crown in church? Yeah? Wouldn't be the first time. So, does anyone know, we'll ask the whole peanut gallery, we won't put you youngins on the spot, what happens next week? Advent! And what does Advent start? Does anyone know? The church year! It also starts our countdown to what is probably your favorite holiday, shout it out. Christmas! Where my Christmas stole? We're all ready. Not quite. No, not quite. You don't have your Christmas shopping done? Anyone started? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So today, we are ending one year. We are ending, it's called year B, and next, year, next week, we're gonna start year C. And it means we're gonna spend the whole church year reading and talking about Jesus. And we'll start by getting ready for his birth on Christmas, and then we'll get to Easter, and we'll spend a whole year together. Isn't that cool? I am so excited. Are you ready for a new year? New beginnings and new possibilities? It's gonna be great. Thank you for playing along. Also, shout out to Allie for wearing a tiara today. She knew we were gonna be celebrating. And I'll let you guys go off to Sunday school. Peace be with you. Endings and beginnings. That is where we are today. The ending of the church year and the official marking of our beginning together with my installation this afternoon. But on this New Year's Eve of the church year, we're not really throwing a party to celebrate, unless you count this afternoon, in which case maybe a little bit. But what we celebrate is Christ the King. We celebrate the reign of Christ. Now, Bishop Bartholomew of the New Jersey Synod, she will be here this afternoon. She described this Sunday as this. She said, Christ the King, or reign of Christ, is a countercultural proclamation that our allegiance is not to an earthly ruler, ideology, country, or philosophy, but rather God reigns over all. And for that, we rejoice. It made me think about what does the reign of Christ look like? 
This thing that we celebrate today, what, what does it look like? In order to understand it, I turn to Jesus's ministry. But the reign of Christ, it looks like the way Jesus taught. All people, men, women, children, those inside the community and outside. I look to Jesus' preaching, again, to all people, men, women, and children, proclaiming God's radical love and inclusion. I look to the way that Jesus healed people. All people, regardless of their status, of whether they had money, whether or not they would thank him. See, Jesus' ministry was squashing stereotypes and challenging the cultural expectations by eating with tax collectors, befriending the poor, and helping all people. Jesus was causing quite a scene. See, this is what the reign of Christ looks like, the turning of society upside down, where the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Our gospel this morning is a flashback to Good Friday. We see Pilate, the governor of Roman-occupied Palestine, this man who is in a position of high power in this empire of oppression. And Pilate looks at Jesus and says, Are you the king of the Jews? Now, if Jesus was a king, that would challenge Pilate, would challenge his authority, challenge his power. See, empire and kingdom in this time was about fighting to keep your power, to keep your status. So if Jesus was a king, did that mean war was coming? Was the Roman Empire going to be challenged by this man? Pilate was worried, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, my kingdom is not from this world. They, these people, they're not fighting with me or for me. See, if my kingdom was here right now, the kingdom that I taught and preached and where healing was abundant, if that was here right now, they would all be fighting for me to stay. See, Jesus was a king. But he was a king of grace and peace and mercy. He didn't build an army for war. If he did, he would have been picking the strongest men to follow him. Instead, his followers were women and children, the sick and the poor. An army of a different kind. Jesus said, my kingdom is not from this world. And it's both a beautiful and a challenging thing. It's beautiful because God's love and grace and peace and mercy are out of our comprehension. We can't fit it all inside of our head. And that's also a challenge because God's love and grace and peace and mercy cannot be stuffed into our head. We can't hold it. We can never truly understand it because it is just beyond our reach there for us. See, this day, the reminder that we are called to be the creation of the kingdom here on earth, right here with all people. Because Jesus' kingdom was not of this world, but we are called to try and make it look like Jesus' kingdom. Christ as the king is not what we expect or understand. But it's what we need as individuals, as a community gathered here, and as a world. We need that love and inclusion to know that we are perfect, even though we are not perfect. We need that grace and mercy to be reminded that even though we are sinners and fall short, we are still saints. We need that focus on abundance rather than living out of scarcity, because there is enough for everyone. We need that time of being together in a world that is pulling us apart. See, God's kingdom on earth, 
Christ's reign here calls each of us to do the work, to be stewards of all of God's creation using our time, our talents, our treasures, and our resources. It invites us to deepen our roots in this place and in this world. It invites us to grow together in faith, acknowledging the past and helping to write the future. And it's a reminder that we do not do this alone. We do this with God right by our side every step of the way. See, Jesus is not the king that we know to be a king. Jesus is a king who is approachable. He doesn't live in a castle with an army, with a throne that you must approach and say, you know, dear king, this is what I need. Jesus was a king born in a manger. Jesus was a king born to parents who weren't married. In extraordinary times and circumstances. I went back and forth whether or not to wear my Christmas stole today. And I decided that it was right. Because Jesus is not a king wearing a crown. Jesus is a king born in a manger. Jesus is a king who is also relational. He prioritizes us over anything else. Our gospel comes to us today on Good Friday after Jesus has been betrayed. But what was he doing not 12 hours earlier, but sharing a meal with his friends and washing their feet, knowing that they would betray him and deny him? Because that relationship was more important. Jesus is a king who sees us as a beautiful creation made by God. Jesus cries and grieves with us. Jesus sits with us when we are sick, heals us when all else has failed. He sees and listens to our needs. Jesus is a king who proclaims that God's love is for everyone and that nothing can separate us from God. Not life or death or doubt or questions or apocalypse. We heard it in our reading from Revelation today, says, I am the Alpha and Omega, who is and who was and who is to come. Christ the King is not what we expect or understand, but what we need individually and collectively because Jesus, who is right now, and who was in the past, and who is still to come. As we end this church year and begin anew, how can we share in the reign of Christ together? How can we all work to make this world look a little more like the kingdom of God? How can we be good stewards of all that God has provided to us, and using this to share with others? It's a big question. And so let's start one day at a time. Next week begins Advent, when we anticipate the birth of Christ and the return of Christ. And it reminds me in our reading, Jesus says, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world. As we enter into this time of hearing Jesus' birth, and spending the next year reading about exactly what Jesus came into the world to do. Listen to his teachings. Listen to Jesus' speaking and storytelling, the way he answers questions. Listen to the way that Jesus challenges expectations. And listen for the ways that God shows up. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world. Not to rule as a king, but Jesus walked the earth with each and every one of us to know what it meant to be human, to teach us, and to love us, and to teach us to then show that to others. Look for the ways that God walks with you on this journey, in the good times, and the bad. 
as we all work to bring the kingdom of God here. Amen. We profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism, or we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My apologies.
In prayers this morning, we uh, pray for Greta, Tom's sister, for appointment tomorrow, for Jen and Eric for healing, for Carl Persen, who is still in the hospital, and a pair of thanks for Jackie for successful surgery. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the change of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgive, forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to liberate all creation. We pray for all living things, longing for the freedom to flourish from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassion, compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering, especially Carl, Greta, Jen and Eric. And we give God thanks for Jackie's successful surgery. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those who, whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And thank God for us being imperfect. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. As we conclude our stewardship campaign today, we will have a special offering prayer and a blessing of the pledge cards that were placed in the plate. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen us to be your stewards. Bless these are gifts of time, talents, resources, and treasures. We dedicate them to you and your service and to doing your work. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body and blood of Christ given for you. and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have strengthened our hearts through the feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you now and forever. Amen. The God of hope fills us with all joy and peace 
in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. song too. Uh, a handful of announcements, and by that I might mean two handfuls. Um, thank you to everyone who brought in food for the food drive. Um, that has been a true blessing to the community. Uh, a reminder, we have a whole lot coming up this week. Today at three o'clock is my installation, which I hope you will all join us as you are able, either in person or online. Uh, there will be no Bible study tomorrow because there is a Thanksgiving service on Tuesday at 7.30 right here. Um, we hope you'll join us again, either in person or online. Uh, that also will be starting um, our Advent season. It is here. Um, on Tuesday nights for the four weeks of Advent, we will be doing an Advent study and service. It will be part time of looking at scripture and discussion. Um, and then we will have a brief spoken evening prayer. The model for this will be hybrid. We're going to try something new and see how it works. So you are welcome to either join us in person, we'll do it around the fireplace in the narthex, or you are welcome to join us on Zoom. It will be 7.30 at night. Both options, you will be 100% a participant. Um, so I hope that you consider joining us for that. Um, we have the poinsettia sign up in the narthex. That time has come also. Um, for our families, we are starting something called Advent in a Bag. Um, I believe the Sunday school kids got them, um, and we'll be making sure they get distributed. Uh, Christmas giving, Christmas gifts, and all of that logistics are still being worked out. Um, so please stay tuned for the ways that we can give and help others this Christmas season. Uh, we concluded our stewardship campaign, but it is never too late to return your pledge card or to continue giving. Um, you can either bring it on in person, you can leave it in the plate, you can leave it in the office, or you can give online. Um, and also a huge thank you to Mike O'Neill. Our property today looked amazing. Um, he was here working very hard, so thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and with the bishop coming, we're gonna look awesome. Sir. Thank you, Mike. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Marvelous. Led on by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.